Well, the New Year celebration is almost over, and let's not lie, we didn't really get a whole lot for this. Now, Grail casting was very, very nice. I greatly appreciate getting the extra two Grails every single month. And the GSSR is always really fun to pull on, but let's be honest, there's really not a whole lot to do with the New Year's celebration. I kind of wish they would have moved the advanced quests up, maybe a little bit so we could have something to kind of do with our new units. But thankfully, in a couple of days here, as of this video going live, we are going to be getting the Koyanskaya Light Banner, which... I am hoping and praying that a lot of you guys have saved your Saint Quartz for this banner because, you know, we already did the video covering her a couple of months ago for anniversary, but it's not like this servant got any worse. In fact, if you're using your clairvoyance, this servant just gets even better because later on this year in about, let's say, five to six this month, you know, around that kind of time frame, we're going to be getting the 90 plus plus variants of the 90 plus nodes that start introducing enemies that have like seven, 800, 900,000 HP, even breaching over a million HP. And your buster comps are going to be a very easy way to not only kind of sidestep the weird nodes, not that you can't still do them with arts, you know, you can get away with some weird setups, you know, especially double Castoria, bringing an AoE and a single target, but it might be kind of an event to event type thing where maybe you have a really good matchup. You have a single target arts that has the power mod that you exactly need to beat the 1 million HP. Maybe you've got Nero Bride, her sky attribute power mod. She's NP3. She takes the guy out, but that's not going to quite cut it for all of the different 90 plus plus nodes. And so getting yourself into the buster meta so you can kind of ignore one the weird nodes but also take advantage of that boy oberon to just nuke those guys to kingdom come is going to be very very nice so this is just a psa for everybody out there that if you're trying to go for and i understand king hassan is very cool i'm actually in my reread of camelot right now and the dude is right about to appear and i'm pretty excited about that but i know he's really sick you want the big knight skull man but save your saint courts Go for Koyan Sky Light because she is definitely going to raise the power level of your account. But I also want to make sure that people aren't fretting and kind of, you know, losing their minds because maybe you really want to go for Reigns because Reigns is also going to be coming out. If we have the exact same schedule as the JP server, it should be the day after Koyan Light goes up. So that should be maybe Thursday. If Koyan Light is going to be coming out Wednesday at reset, you know, crossing our fingers that, you know, we're not going to be having too much of a dead period over here on NA. But say you really want to go for Reigns and you're kind of panicking, you know, you know you should be going for Koyan Skaya, but you want to summon for Reigns because getting that extra waiver on your account that has a lot of that defensive utility and is very, very strong into, you know, more CQ oriented content. Do not be too afraid. You can at least kind of afford to skip out on this Koyan Skaya banner because she should be coming back at the end of the year if for whatever reason they decide to not bring that banner back. I think that'd be absolutely ludicrous of them to do so. Like, there's no reason for them to not bring it back. So you can wait to the end of the year, grab Koyan Light at that point, and then still summon for Reigns, for Case Files, or maybe you're waiting for Valentine's Day. You want to go summon for Bazette, or you want to try to maybe get Karen, who's also going to be coming back for that event as well. If you want to summon for them, I wouldn't stress out too much because, again, she will come back at the end of the year. But do also note that we're going to be getting a lot of other very strong servants that come back at the very end of the year, you know, namely people like Muramasa, Melusine, Oberon comes back, and we should also be getting Lost Belt 7 as they announced in the New Year's livestream that Lost Belt 7 is coming out this year as it was supposed to come out on JP apparently in November, but they had a lot of issues and that pushed it back to what was late December and then eventually into January as far as I'm able to kind of understand the issues that they had. So do also keep in mind that towards the end of the year, maybe anywhere from November to December, you might be seeing Needle Chris Alter or Kuko Khan dropping on the game. It really just depends on when they actually decide to drop Lost Belt 7, but again, maybe temper your expectations a little bit because while it was kind of a botched release over on JP, we've seen on NA that they uh, really can kind of botch things up over here as well. I don't want to hold their feet to the fire because of the Ivan thing all the time, but you know, that's still a pretty big stain on the game on them being able to kind of just get things out at a consistent rate. So just because they say they're planning it for, you know, the end of 2024 doesn't mean that I'm going to be fully putting my stocks into it. But again, keep in mind that if you do not go for Koyan Sky of the Light right now, you are going to be running that risk of not being able to summon for Oberon, Melusine, and potentially what is going to be one of the best servants of all time, Kukul Khan. I mean, she's absolutely insane. If you didn't look at my video covering all the best servants that came out for JP, spoiler alert, she topped that list because Kukul Khan is just absolutely nuts. 
And that also means you're potentially going to be missing out on Kire or Rasputin, whatever you want to call him, as he's going to be the New Year's servant. So it's just, I feel a better time to go for Koyanskaya right now, because you don't want to have to summon for Koyanskaya on top of all of these other nut-bustingly good servants that we're going to be getting. Because sure, Reigns is really good, I think Bazet is a very fun servant to use, but you could just leave them on the GSSR, and then you know when you're looking at a new GSSR to do, you could be like, you know what, I didn't pull for Bazet, she's on one of the GSSRs that I want to pull for, and now she's a really good option, you know, I sometimes have to do that copium for myself, you know, avoid summoning for say, someone like Tyra, well, I did kind of go hard for at the beginning of the year, but I didn't push to try to really get her, because I was like, you know what, if she's on a GSSR that I want to summon on, I'll just leave her as a solid option over there. Same thing for someone like Reigns, because while they are some good servants, getting someone like Koyanskaya on your account and allowing you to bust a farm is just going to put you in a very strong position, as it's kind of like not only good for being able to do buster farming that's the number one thing that everybody's going to jump to and it just makes your life very very convenient but it's also really good because functionally the way that koyan sky handles cq content is the same way you would normally use scotty but it's just more updated you know star bombing giving you double power mod against humanoid and man attribute enemies 50% battery is the same thing as Scotty's, but you also get skill cooldown reduction. She makes your Buster card pseudo arts card so you can kind of keep up the pressure on the enemies, giving you that strong Buster crit damage. Her NP actually can be a bit useful in being able to not only refund your party's NP, but also drain one tick from the entire enemy party. She's just a really good servant, man, and I'm really trying to push this on people because I'm telling you, you get Koyanskaya, your life is going to be way easier. Take this from someone who started playing JP about like three, four years ago and did not get Koyanskaya, and my life has been very, very hard, especially with these new 90 plus plus nodes on JP. I mean, sometimes I'm able to do them, but the last lottery node that we had, I just really could not figure out a thing with my specific box to really get in there. And then granted, the 90 plus was good. It dropped some eggs, so I was gonna farm that anyway, but even still, the 90 plus plus kind of gatekeeping me out of that because my servants just don't feel like they're consistently able to get the job done is going to be very frustrating right it's just very annoying especially when you're doing something like a lotto and the 90 plus plus gives you more bond you know more resources it's just the better thing to go farm so i'm trying to tell you to put your best foot forward go for koi and sky light you know look at the other guys maybe they have a different rate up maybe they'll come back at some other point maybe just look at other gssrs and be like oh okay i was gonna go for bazette but she's gonna be on the anniversary gssr that i really want to pull for anyway or she's gonna be on the upcoming new year's gssr that i want to summon for anyway and maybe try to hit some of those and then you know put your account in a better situation so you can really have a much more convenient time playing the game because the last thing you want is to feel like you're being gay kept out of some content because again you can still do the 90 plus plus nodes with you know your double cast toria setups because you know that's what i have to do most of the time but sometimes it's either impossible for you to do consistently on a three turn setup because you don't have the specific unit that's really good into say that 90 plus plus node you don't have the np level so you do have the right servant but they're only like np1 so they can't get the job done or the one that I actually just find to be the worst is that it comes down to card RNG, which can be very annoying. On the Potomi event, I had to do that with Durga. It came down to card RNG because mine was NP1. And so sometimes it was a three turn, sometimes it was a five turn, and that can get really annoying and gets old very quickly. So again, just wanted to put out a quick video, just letting you guys know she's coming out in about two days from this video going up. Should be Wednesday at reset when we're going to be getting Koyanskaya of the Light. Make sure you stockpile your second courts. You go get your tickets for the New Year's event. You know, go grab your 10 that you're supposed to get for New Year's. Grab your five for the monthly reset and go hit that banner hard. And I am tr praying that you do not have the struggle that I had on both the NA and JP version of summoning for this Koyan Sky. In fact, I still don't even have her on JP. You know, I'm just leaving with depression. But that's basically going to be it. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel to be up to date on all that good FGO content on both versions of the game, and I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace. Late, guys.